Richard Rell is here with columnist Bob Robin. Bob, I've never had the power to sign a piece of paper and then have things happen because of that. I imagine executive orders are a lot of fun, but you find some problems in some recent orders Governor Ducey has proclaimed. Uh, yes, and, and, and I think it illustrates that it has come time to put an end to Ducey's emergency powers under COVID uh, one way or the other, either him declaring the emergency over or if he's unwilling to do that for the legislature to use its authority by joint resolution um, to declare um, the emergency over. Uh, what I guess, yeah, let's, let's go through them one by one. First, we have the university mask mandate. Arizona State said that if you didn't have the vaccine, you needed to wear a mask and submit to testing. And the governor ended that. And you thought that's an overreach based on the Constitution. Uh, yes, the governor has no uh, direct authority over the universities. Uh, the Board of Regions is a constitutional body um, that is vested with that responsibility. The governor appoints the members of the regents, and he's an ex officio member of it, but they don't report to him. They are completely independent. He has no direct authority. And in this case, he actually invoked uh, his emergency authority to protect public health um, with respect to COVID, uh, not to advance anything that protected public health, uh, but to prevent ASU from doing the things that it wants to do uh, to protect public health. I thought it was overly restrictive, um, but it wasn't the governor's uh, place uh, or responsibility to uh, override that. And the fact that he used his emergency COVID power uh, not to advance a public health measure, uh, but to stop one, uh, I think is as much indication as we need that uh, the emergency declaration needs to be put an end to one way or another. And I guess the other isn't quite COVID related, but it did relate to how uh, he ordered the school board to handle what was a pretty thorny sex ed issue. So, I mean, is this just a, a thing governors can do that if no one stops them, these orders can continue to have the force of a, of a law? Yeah, I mean, someone needs to stand up and, and say, we're not going to do this. And the Board of Education is another independent constitutional body. Uh, the governor has no direct authority over it. Uh, yet when the governor was getting heat from social conservatives for vetoing a sex education bill that they strongly supported, uh, he issued an order to the Board of Regents uh, to adopt a very specific regulation uh, about uh, giving people the right to review sex education materials before they're put to use uh, in, in the classroom. Um, at, at some point, uh, I mean, on, on, on his asserting authority that he doesn't naturally have as a result of the pandemic, that can be done away with um, by eliminating the emergency. Uh, by rescinding it um, by joint legislative re resolution. Uh, these other things, I mean, someone needs to stand up and say, sorry, governor, it's not your call. Uh, I don't know whether the Board of Education will do that on this particular regulation or not. Um, and certainly the governor has um, still um, the right to veto the budget. So anyone who wants money from the state uh, has a reason not to want to pick a fight with the governor over something small. Uh, but these are starting to accumulate. Uh, and if uh, Ducey is not willing to exercise some self-restraint, uh, there does need to be something that returns us to the natural constitutional order and the limits on the governor's authority and rec. Right. I guess if someone has not stood up yet to put a Stop to it, at least someone has stood up to point it out to Arizona. Thanks, Brian. Thanks.